Welcome back to another episode of A Legal Studies Teacher Reads the News. Today, I'm going to be looking at the family law system, specifically thinking about law reform and what the government has done and failed to do when it comes to reforming the law. Really, this is going to be looking at changes to family law as a response to changing values in the community, the role of law reform in achieving just outcomes for family members in society, and the effectiveness of legal and non-legal responses, mainly legal responses in achieving just outcomes for family members. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go through every single article. I'm going to talk briefly about each one and about the process uh, that has basically happened when it comes to reforming the courts and the and the family law uh, system. So this is a very good article here. Basically, what I did is, is I just went to abc.net. It's a great place for you to find articles and just looked up family law. And what that gives you is a whole bunch of articles. And what you can do is go through over time and kind of trace efforts at family law by paying attention, not just to what they're saying, but the dates and what's actually happening. So this is a helpful article. This is from February 2020, this year, 2020. And it's basically talking about and giving you a little overview of law reform from 1959 to 1975, discussing what happened there, and then the change, the push for reform from the 60s and into 75, and that's a nice little discussion of law reform uh, and changing values in the community. And then we have no-fault divorce being introduced in 1975 by a firm majority, 80 to 41. Following that, we have then the need for reform as a question from 76 to present, and it's talking about a whole bunch of different reforms that have happened. And we're going to look at this idea here. The 2017 the Terminal Government asked for a review, and we're going to see what happened to that. We're going to do that by looking at a bunch of articles. And it's always helpful when you're looking at an article to see when it says something like an inquiry was announced that's going to be you know released on the March 2019. Well, you go and you look at articles from around that time. And usually you, get, you find these really helpful articles explaining the broad strokes of, you know, recommendations by the Australian Law Reform Commission or problems. And, and you know, they'll ask some experts from some university to talk about it. So, so here we go. Let's have a look. So first of all, these are, as I said, there's some that are podcasts listened to, less than 10 minutes. Some are smaller than that. George Brandis, he was the Attorney General, and he asked for a major overhaul. To the, uh, to the review of the system and basically saying we need to have a huge review of the system and work out what's going on. Uh, Fiona McLeod, president of the Australian Law Council, said, yes, the family law system is in crisis. So this is in September of 2017. Most people agreed it was fine. And one of the things that happened at the time is a lovely picture of, uh, of young Pauline. And basically people were saying, I think you are kowtowing to Miss Hanson. She's always been a very strong advocate of changing the law reform, uh, sorry, the family law system. However, one thing she likes to do is she likes to not listen to evidence or experts. She's a big fan of listening to what she thinks is right. And uh, and this is Brandis basically saying, no, we didn't actually listen just to her. We think it's necessary and it's overdue. So that's 2017. That's kind of the same day. And then there's another little a podcast, well, a little podcast, sorry. There's a huge podcast, goes for nearly an hour, looking at this review. So he got Professor Helen Rhodes from Melbourne University uh, to lead the review. It was due March 2019. It was going to address what changes were most necessary in order to fix it. So here's a law section. Um, a couple of people from Victoria talking about it and saying what's going to go on. So that's 26th of October, a month afterwards. Now we have another one looking at this question of state control. So having a look at this, this is from 11th of April, 2019. So we jump forward two years. The review has been, or not two years, so it was the end of 2017. This is the start of 2019. So we're about 15 months later. The Australian Law Reform Commission has recommended scrapping the National Family Court and handing control of family law back to states and territories. So basically, it, it stated that there was so much kind of duplication and uh, state uh, services, you know, the, the, the police and, uh, and support family services, they're all there in the states, and then they're going to a federal court, and, and they basically said it's, it's not happening. 
Another thing to note here was, for some reason, the coalition decided back in, in I think it was in April, beginning of April, you know what we're going to do? We're actually going to merge the Federal Circuit Court and the Family Court. Now, why you do this when you're almost releasing, you're you know very close to releasing a, a 15-month review into the system and not sure what it's going to say, it, it blew most people kind of, their heads were like, what on earth are you doing? And it didn't happen. So it failed, and that's that's that. So we have the review. This is the Family Law for the Future Review, uh, an inquiry into the family law system. It's the final report, March 2019. And it, it recommends 60 recommendations, and a lot of these were. There should be a, uh, a little... Thing that you can look up where it's kind of um, gives you a clear little picture of it. But I'll give you one example. There's the terms of reference. That's what they were supposed to be looking at. There's the people that were on it. And it found a whole range of problems, huge problems. And it sets out things. So closing the jurisdictional gap. So that's what I was talking about when it comes to uh, we need to take, go from family federal court, we need to make it state-based. Okay, so that, that was their first thing. Then they should work with state and territory governments to develop and implement a national information sharing framework to guide the sharing of information about the safety and welfare, and it should include legal framework for sharing information, a whole bunch of other things, police records, experts reports, etc. So, So as you can see, recommendation after recommendation. Simplify, let's just go through the headings. So closing the jurisdictional gap, children's matters, so there's this question of, um, certain parts of it should be repealed of the of the uh, Family Law Act should be repealed or should be amended so that the they best promote the safety of the child and the child's carers from family abuse, etc., etc. We had a simplified approach to property division. So a whole bunch of this this needs to change here, this needs to change there. Uh, encouraging amicable resolutions. I've pushed this idea that we need to really say you guys need to meet up first and and discuss things in in mediation and at family justice centres rather than in uh, court, arbitration, here's some changes there, case management, efficiency and accountability, compliance with children's orders, support services to the courts, building accountability and transparency, legislative clarity, so fixing up, making things a bit easier, and then secondary in, uh, interventions, which is all about different support services and case management and how they worked within the system. 60 recommendations in all. So, So that was kind of set out. In March, finally, it's released an expert review and the response from the government. Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah. That was the response. Nothing. Absolutely no response from the government. They did not say thank you for the report. We'll look into it and give you a date when we'll come back to it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Until, I think, September 2019, last year, when they decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have yet another inquiry. Yet another inquiry into family law and child support systems. So the government decided they're going to launch an inquiry. Uh, coalition backbenchers and the crossbench, including, wait for it, One Nation Leader Pauline Hanson have been calling for an inquiry for some time, arguing the system is too expensive and slow. The inquiry will be run by former social services minister and long-serving Liberal MP, Kevin Andrews, there he is. A tearful Senator Hanson welcomed the announcement, saying it was something she'd campaigned for since her first did. We know. In 1996, it's not the Pauline Hanson inquiry. This is the Australian People's inquiry, she said, etc., etc. She talks about it. Uh, concerns review will cause further delays. You would think so, because if we go back, here's all of the expert inquiries set up, all of their recommendations, and now we're having another inquiry that will be, how long was it going to take? Uh, 18 months, I think it was. When was it supposed to be released? I think it was October 2020. So... You've got to ask yourself, don't you? What, what's going on here? You've already got an inquiry. Government orders another family law inquiry just months after the major review. So this is a, a segment on, on uh, with Fran Kelly on RN Breakfast. Federal government announced another review. There are concerns from advocates that the review may delay reform to the sector. Of course it would. Former Deputy Chief Justice of the Family Court of Australia, John Fawkes, says family law is a fraught area and that there are many factors impinging upon what's the best interest of children, and those are the things that require some teasing out and some detailed thought. So that's John Fawkes, and you can hear him as a guest on that discussion there. Labor opposed it, basically saying, look, we've already had one. Why are you having another? 
The answer is there have been lots of similar inquiries which the government hasn't responded to, and this one's being co-chaired now by One Nation leader Pauline Hanson, who says the system is weighted against men, and there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of evidence to that, that assertion there. Now we have Morrison government solo on industrial laws. We ignore that one. But bootlicks One Nation on family law. So Michelle Grattan not really pulling any punches here. Unsurprisingly, wrangling in legislation through the upper house preoccupies the government, et cetera, et cetera. Michelle is claiming that uh, Ms. Hansen's used her greater power within a smaller crossbench in the Senate, in the upper house, to basically push for a liberal conservative, Kevin Andrews, who has a strong long-term interest and commitment to marriage counselling, and it's backing Ms. Hansen as the deputy chair. A 10-member committee, five will be from the government. The AOP, which posed the inquiry, will have three, and there'll be one lower house crossbencher, Sally Siegel, who's a barrister specialised in family law. Continuing on, we have an opinion from Renata Alexander, and she is, let's have a look at Renata. Always helpful to read who this person is. She's a Victorian barrister and a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Law at Monash University. Okay, so that's where she's coming from. And she's basically asking this question, well, how many inquiries and reports does it take for a, you know, the government to actually answer? And as many as possible, as long as you procrastinate and do not implement any recommendations. So, so another great article that you'll find on ABC from Renata, which really is, is asking these questions of, we've already got reviews. Why are you asking for more inquiries? What's going on? And some pretty harsh Statements here. Some of the issues raised by the terms of reference are already in legislation. For example, grandparents are already specifically mentioned in provisions of the family law. So she's saying they've actually opened an inquiry looking at stuff which is already in law. So what's the problem? And uh, yep, some, some really long ranging issues here. The Council of Attorneys General has not looked at national family violence laws since 1999. So basically saying action actually needs to be taken. We need to stop having inquiries. We actually need to do something. Another uh, Julia Holman talking here, basically saying one thing that's not thought about is it's already a stretched system. Already there aren't enough resources. And yet, and yet, each inquiry takes even more resources and pushes reform back to actually fixing it. And here's the final kind of kicker in this sad tale. This is from ABC Newcastle. It was posted today. That is the 2nd of September, 2020. It's basically discussing just how crippling the workloads are for family law judges and saying that the wait times are putting the nation's most vulnerable women and children at risk. So uh, the committee found in the Senate today found that here, the chair of the New South Wales Bar Association's Family Law Committee, Michael Kearney, SC told the committee it was unacceptable that it took 560 days to replace a Sydney judge. So I think for every single one of those days, a judge, and some of these judges later on we see, have 600 cases on their dockets at the same time. Okay, It's taken nearly two years to replace a judge in, in Newcastle. So the, the already stretched system, the already long waiting times are being further and further and further put off. So that was a Sydney judge, seven months for a new judge to be, uh, to be replaced in Newcastle and a year to replace one in Brisbane. So, so a huge amount of times. And as, as he rightly says, it's an absolute indictment on the government's funding of all registries in Australia, but particularly Newcastle, and it's got no better. So, so really this is basically stating we, we don't have enough judges. They cost money. We have a huge delay. There is not enough funding, so resource efficiency is something you're looking at. And it's this question of how much a judge is actually able to take. So there's this push for mediation and arbitration. Uh, and this is Mr. Mr. Cox here, is a former judge who now works in mediation and arbitration. And as he says, families that are a breaking point now are favoring arbitration because it's quicker, saves time and money, but you still have that huge weight, which is telling you that there are cases that are too complex that are too severe to be heard in arbitration and mediation and they require the family court and the family court's taking way too long. So, so that is just a very, very brief look at a really complex system 
and and reform that has i think from shows clearly that the government is not willing to take steps here that is a that is a clear criteria you can use responsiveness if you're talking about law reform in the family law the government has had an inquiry after inquiry after inquiry they actually initially had an inquiry before the 2017 one which they also did not respond to so so we're seeing this these kind of kicking the can down the road would be a common cliche that you'd use and when it comes to changes that are needed in relation to the changing values in the community well people want these to be dealt with quickly surely and so changes aren't being made law reform is not happening in an effective manner cuz changes are not being made despite recommendations being made and you're going to have to say it's an ineffective legal response to achieving just outcomes for family members. Okay, so hopefully that helps. But as I said, go to abc.net, look up family law. All of these articles are available. All these podcasts and short stories are available for you to listen to. Make sure you write down who's saying things so that you can get ready for exams. You can quote, you know, this guy, you can quote John Fawkes, former Deputy Justice of Family Court. You can quote uh, Renata, you can quote, who is this This guy speaking as well? Um, oh, no, no, not that one, sorry. This one over here. Uh, you can quote Nahum Mushlin, former family court justice and adjunct professor of law at Mon Monash University. So that's all available for you. It's not behind a paywall. It's on the ABC website. Go and check it out and prepare for your HSC family law option.